Hello and good morning everyone. I am Dr. Anil Manji, Assistant Professor in English from Government Engineering College, Rapur. I welcome you all to today's lecture on Influence of Seneca and Classical Dramatic Theory, which is included in the syllabus of BA first year English Literature, Literature in English from 1550 to 1750. Let's begin. The Senecan tragedy was written to be recited than acted, but to the English playwrights who thought that these tragedies had been intended for the stage. They provided the model for an organized five act play with a complex plot and an elaborately formal style of dialogue. Senecan drama in the Elizabethan age had two main lines of dialogue. One of these consisted of academic tragedies, written in close imitation to the Senecan model, including the use of a chorus, and usually constructed according to the rules of the three unities, which had been elaborated by Italian critics of the 16th century. The earliest example was Thomas Sacquille and Thomas Norton's Gorgoda. Here in the image, you can see it is the cover page of the tragedy of Gorboda, and here is the image of Thomas Sackville. The other and much more important development was written for the popular stage, and it is called as the Revenge Tragedy, or in its most sensational form, the Tragedy of Blood. This type of play derived from Seneca's favorite materials of murder, revenge, ghost, mutilation, and carnage. But while Seneca had re relegated such matters to long reports of offstage actions by messengers, Elizabethan dramatists usually represented them on the stage to satisfy the appetite of the contemporary audience for violence and horror. Examples of Revenge tragedies include Thomas Kitt's Spanish tragedy established this popular form. Its subject was murder and the quest of vengeance. And it includes a ghost, insanity, suicide, a play within a play, sensational incidents, and a gruesomely bloody ending. It also includes the Christopher Marlowe's The Jew of Malta and Shakespeare early play Titus Andronicus. From this lively but unlikely prototype came one of the greatest tragedies, Hamlet or Shakespeare, as well as John Webster's fine horror plays of 1612 to 1613. They are the Duchess of Malfi and the White Devil. Influence of classical dramatic theory we can see that the classical type of play, it confined our attention to the points which immediately concerns here are, that is we can epitomize the principles of the classical drama under three heads. It adhered rigorously to the unity of subject and tone, and it, as a result, it kept the spheres of tragedy and comedy entirely separate. As you can see in the diagram shown. Okay. A tragedy had to be a tragedy from first to last. It had to maintain the proper tragic pitch and avoid all suggestions of familiarity. And no humorous episodes were permitted in it. A comedy had to be a comedy from first to last similarly. And no tragic element was allowed to enter into its composition. There was a little or no dramatic action. The incidents composing the plot taking place off the stage and being reported to the audience in dialogue and set narrative. In theory, at all events, the three unities of time, place, and action control the construction by which we mean in the briefest possible statement, the entire story of the play had to be confined to a single day, 
to the single scene it has to be one single story only without subplots or minor episodes of any these principles were derived or more correctly speaking were supposed to be derived from the practice of the attic writers of tragedy and the teachings of the great critic aristotle but they came into the modern drama through the plays of the latin poet seneca in which they were exhibited in the severest form this was particular type of drama which the humanist sought to introduce so this was all about influence of seneca and classical dramatic theory thank you so much have a nice day